Let's talk money. Hello and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Money with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Well, a brand new financial year is here. And today on the show, we're going to talk about why April is an important month. Why we should not, you know, uh, push back all thoughts of money, our portfolio, our taxes and all things personal finance towards the end of the fiscal. It's always a good idea to start early. So the question is, how do we do this? Uh, what are the steps? How do we go about looking at our financial plan? Well, to help us answer this question, uh, the guest with me today is Kalpesh Asher of Full Circle Financial Planners and Advisors. Kalpesh, thank you very much for joining us in the studios. Thank and you. let me start by wishing you a very happy new fiscal year. Thank you and wishing all the viewers and you a happy new financial year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, the last uh, 12 months have been actually very good for uh, investors. In fact, uh, most asset classes have gone up. Equity markets have been roaring. Corrections have been short and shallow. So what are your opening thoughts as we start our discussion today? So, you know, as we say that uh, normally asset classes move in, in uh, different directions. Mm. But this time, I think it's a very unique thing that we are seeing equity markets at an all-time high. We are seeing gold touching an all-time high. We are on the brink of the so-called interest rate cuts. Mm. So all those things are looking very, very, you know, positive and very, uh, I would say, cheerful uh, thoughts for the investor. So in this, I think, mindset, we mm. also need to be wary. <laughs> and uh, that's why, like what you rightly said, that April is that month where we need to take stock of things. You know, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. For the better part of my life as well, uh, the only thing you think about in April is, okay, I have to give my investment declaration to my employer and maybe I have to figure out if I have any tax-saving instruments uh, in my portfolio or not. Uh, tell us why that's not the right approach. No, so I think, uh, you know, that is the most uh, talked about thing mm. uh, in the personal finance parlance that uh, people say that, you know, you'll push it at the end of the year. Mm. And especially talking about uh, something like uh, the tax planning, yeah. Uh, you know, people say that Jan, Feb, March of the current year is the right thing to do it. I think that planning should be done now itself. Mm -hmm. And why that happens is because people still perceive tax planning in isolation. Mm. They do not see tax planning as an entire financial plan exercise. Yeah. That if they do very, you know, discreet financial planning, tax planning automatically takes care of it. It's a part, it's of, a the, part the of the whole, whole process yeah. and not yeah. the other way around. Sure. So I think uh, that should just go out of the window and consult your advisor or if you have a, a good CA who will tell you how this can be a part of your entire mm. financial planning process because then people are prone to mistakes. They do things in a hurry mm. and all the things which are the don'ts of financial planning, <laughs> they come into the picture. So, okay, let's, uh, you know, as they say, the, let's start from the very beginning, a very good place to start. Uh, you know, help us with maybe a checklist. Where does one begin? If I want to do things right this financial year, FI25, where do I start? What's the checklist? So as we say, the, the end motive of financial planning or your financial profile should be your financial goals. Mm. So no better time than revisiting your upcoming financial goals for this year and probably I would say one more year. Okay. The reason why I'm adding one more year is because you will have time to adjust your investments, your cash flow and all those things. So revisit your financial goals. Okay. And when I say financial goals, every financial goal which we have should have a future value and should have a time frame attached to it. Mm -hmm. Because we can't just, you know, as we say that uh, your goals cannot be just wishes. Yeah. They have to be put realistic. down. Realistic. Yeah, they have to be realistic. They have to be yeah. put down on paper and you should be able to implement them. Absolutely. And there should be action on it. Mm -hmm. So revisit That's your financial one. goals. That's number one. Okay. Second one out here is mark the important dates on your financial calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we have those holidays, mm. which we always look at first <laughs> in, a in a normal calendar, yeah. I think mark out the important dates on your financial calendar, which is nothing but most importantly, do not miss out on your insurance premiums. Mm. And here I'm being very specific. Insurance premiums is pertaining to your term plan premiums. Mm -hmm. Life insurance. Life term. insurance. Yeah term which we always advocate and not the insurance come investment products. Mm -hmm. Second is your upcoming health insurance mm -hmm. because that also you cannot afford to miss yeah. and keeping sufficient money every time for your SIPs as sure. well. 
Okay. So those are marking the important dates which are there. Sure. So you do not miss out on the protection part mm -hmm. nor on the investment part. Fair enough. So second point is know your important payouts that you must meet. Absolutely. Yeah. On the okay. financial front. Yeah. The third one is obviously I would say the nerve center of financial planning which is the cash flow. Mm -hmm. Because come what may, whatever you are earning, whatever you are spending, if you do not have a handle on your cash flow, mm. believe me Surbhi, things can go haywire. Mm. And people can be living in a complete illusionary state and they do not know when can the you know boat just sink. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. understanding your cash flow for the forthcoming year, marking out what are the expenses which you would like to make mm -hmm. and always keeping your expenses mm -hmm. below your mm -hmm. you know the, the income sure. part which sure. it is. Many times people do the vice versa and it mm -hmm. creates havoc yeah. with their thing. So third point is revisit your cash flow Mm -hmm. and be realistic in that as well. Don't try to fool yourself saying that, no, on paper I might do this, but in reality you're doing something else. Mm -hmm. So do that cash flow, which is nothing but understanding your income mm -hmm. and your expenses. So you know, sometimes the converse also happens, Kalpesh, uh, because uh, uh, we've not taken the, the pain to do a proper cash flow plan. You don't know, maybe you have surplus funds. Exactly. But so, you have no idea, you know, where they're lying and whether they're being put to optimum use. So that's, that's a brilliant point, uh, Surbhi. You know, it works the other way around because people always worry about what if I overshoot my income. Yeah. But on the other hand, there are many people who are extremely conservative. And when you say extremely conservative is mm -hmm. they do not spend. Yeah. But that money is lying idle in the bank account. Mm -hmm. And neither do they spend it to enhance their, you know, uh, a proper life or mm -hmm. invest it discreetly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's a brilliant point. Mm -hmm. The uh, fourth, fourth part point. Yeah, is again an integral part which is creation of contingency fund. Sure. And uh, I think uh, we had all experienced it fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know what to say during the COVID period, yeah. that everybody who had a contingency fund, which is nothing but anything between 6 to 12 months of your uh, you know, expenses set aside, mm -hmm. I think in uh, those terms were the people who were actually thanking their stars that they had something kept mm -hmm. aside. Mm -hmm. Now this contingency fund, again, be very, very, very where you park those funds. Sure. That contingency fund is not meant to generate returns. It's sure. for that rainy day. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I just want to move uh, beyond and now talk about this, uh, this whole business of goal setting and ensuring that my portfolio is in sync with those goals. Absolutely. How do we do a portfolio review? Uh, like you said, that's one of the important things to keep in mind as the year starts off. Yeah, so goal setting, uh, I would say, is attaching a purpose to your mm -hmm. investments. Mm -hmm. So people have various goals and various time frames to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, address them. Yeah. Now the question comes, which product do you tag yeah. with it? Mm -hmm. And that is where your uh, investment selection comes mm -hmm. into the picture. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a broad framework, if your goal setting time frame mm -hmm. is, say, five years and beyond, mm -hmm. Obviously, the answer to that is equity would form a major chunk of your investment mm -hmm. because you're not worried what happens in the sure. short term. Sure. If your time frame is, say, three to five years, mm -hmm. then something of a hybrid product, uh, which is hybrid funds or, you know, even if you could do an asset allocation of, say, 60, 40 on your own, 60 into equity and 40 into debt, mm -hmm. that's fine for a three to five year period. Mm -hmm. But anything below uh, three years is surely a uh, entry into the fixed income space okay because that is where your debt based mutual funds and all mm -hmm. because you don't want volatility to affect your fair goals enough, out there enough, and enough. understand one thing i would like to tell everyone is that if you want to digest your volatility in the capital markets mm. and you want to have a peaceful sleep at night mm. asset allocation will help you do that okay because come what may in the markets if your assets are marked according to a time frame mm. and they are the right products yeah you will not worry about what happens externally to the markets. You know, asset allocation probably now people feel is a little difficult because of what you said, because all asset classes are going up together. So uh, I know that we don't usually generalize when it comes to personal finance advice. It's very selective to each individual. But you know, just, just to get an idea, for someone who is a mid-career professional, a working individual, maybe in their 30s or in their 40s, has a medium risk appetite, what would be like a model portfolio? across different asset classes, looking at today's market environment. Yeah, so with the disclaimers that you said about the model portfolio for a mid-30s type of a person, I would say uh, because he's got 20, 25 years of work still left, yeah. around 60% should be equity. Sure. 
Uh, now, that could be a mix of direct equity if he's researched and if he has the right sources and if he's doing it discreetly. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, equity-based mutual funds could form the crux of it. Mm -hmm. The remaining 20 to 25 percent mm -hmm. could be in debt. Okay. Now, again, that could be if he's a salaried person, it could be obviously the EPF which he's getting yeah. or the debt-based mutual funds or a yeah. PPF, that type of a mix. Right. Five to 10 percent could be gold. Mm -hmm which is now, I think, become a compulsion in every portfolio looking at the situation mm -hmm. where we are, but don't exceed sure. it and don't be greedy there. Yeah. And finally, at least hold 5% in cash. In cash. It also takes care of the contingency buffer that you Absolutely. spoke of earlier. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a break. So we've done the sort of classroom, the basic theory on how to go about setting up our financial plan at the start of the year. We come back on the other side and you've been asking us some questions as well on FY25. So we answer all the viewer queries in just a moment. Let's talk money.